Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Bartholomew as we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time and also the Feast of St. Bartholomew, our patron feast. If you are a visitor with us on this summer weekend, we thank you for being here with us for Eucharist today. A reminder that there is special seating off to my right here in the, um, near the St. John's Bible in the south narthex for those who would like to avail themselves of social distancing, wearing a mask, and also we will bring communion out to you. Please use that as you would find necessary. We remember in our prayers this weekend Christopher Brown and Nicole Lapari, who were married in our parish community earlier this afternoon. We also remember Tom Caswell, who passed away. He is the brother-in-law of our parishioner, Mary Caswell, who coordinates much of our environment here at St. Bart's. We remember Tom, his brother Dick Caswell, Mary's husband, and the extended family in your prayers. The services for Tom will be on September 17th at Wyzetta Community Church. Please remember the family in your prayers. Our opening hymn is found in the worship aid, drawn by his word. We sing verses 1, 4, and 5. Please stand, greet those among you, and remain standing for the hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, a blessed and happy patronal feast to all of you today as we celebrate St. Bartholomew, our patron saint, and the namesake of our parish. My brothers and sisters, as we enter these sacred mysteries, let us follow his lead as he followed Christ by first calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and King of Israel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you invite us to come and see. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise forgiveness of sins to all who believe in your name. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Let us pray. Strengthen in us, O God, the faith which clung the blessed apostle Bartholomew, clung wholeheartedly to your son, and grant that through the help of his prayers your church may become for us and for all the nations the sacrament of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, Hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully. For thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has gods so close to it as this Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as the whole law which I am setting before you today. The word of the Lord.
day after day and praise your name forever and ever the lord is great and highly to be praised his greatness cannot be measured the lord is slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. The Lord is near to all who call, to all who call on him. The Lord is near in all his ways and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him to call on him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call, to all who call on him. The Lord is near A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel spoke to me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. He took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Philip found Bartholomew and told him, We have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law and also the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. But Bartholomew said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Bartholomew coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true Israelite. There is no duplicity in him. Bartholomew said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Bartholomew answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen. I say to you, you will see the sky opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever felt set up? Someone asking you for a favor, and you give legitimate reasons why what is being asked of you is not possible. I had that happen to me with my older sister, Lynn. In the year 2000, I was going making, it was a great jubilee, and I was going to Rome and Italy with some friends. And my sister asked me, she said, you know, we're redoing our kitchen. And if you could give me some ceramic plates, that would be great. You could bring them back with you. I said, Lynn, I said, I, I, I don't know what color scheme you're using for your, for your kitchen. And as I said that, she got into her purse and she put out a, a colored fabric swatch. She said, they're all right here. And she gave them to me. Like, Guys, can you relate to this at all? I mean, <laughs> you walk right into it. So for the next couple of, I think we were there for about 12 days, I'm going throughout all of, of Italy looking for ceramic plates to match this color swatch of fabric that my sister gave me, plums and reds, and, and it had some beiges in it. Nothing seemed to match. We were in Rome, we are in Ostia, we were in other places. No, nothing. Then we were in um, Deruda, which is this famous place in Italy for ceramics. And I've been looking for days. Every day we're looking for ceramics. Favorite thing for guys to do. <laughs> and I stumbled across these ceramic plates. And they were unlike all the others. They were kind of muted in their colors. They weren't these vibrant colors that you normally see with a nice shiny glaze. They were muted. They were just terracotta. And they had just very muted painted colors, but it matched perfectly the swatch that my sister gave me. So I bought three of them. What I found out, though, with, um, and you can correct me after Mass if you want to, if you're really into pottery, um, that there are two types of firings that a ceramic plate goes through, if you want to glaze at the end. The first is a bisquet, I think it's pronounced, firing. That's the first firing that brings, uh, converts like weak clay into a strong, durable form that we would call terracotta. That's the first firing. The second firing is where glaze is put on the terracotta and a second firing is done and it melts the glaze into the coat of color that becomes very vibrant. In a certain way, I think that our saint that we're celebrating today 
as it is with all saints and with each and every one of us. But today we're here to celebrate St. Bartholomew, who was flayed and crucified. But his firings happened before that. The firings of this great saint was the crucible fire of the Holy Spirit and the strength of an encounter that he had with the living God. You could say his bisque firing, his first firing, from converted just as humanity into a strong apostle of the Lord, was encountering Christ for the first time. Come and see, which we just heard proclaimed. The second was his being transfigured, radiating brightly with an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in his life. And seeing, as we heard in our gospel account today from John chapter 1, Jesus saying to him, you will see greater things than this. Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And praise be to God, we have this beautiful stained glass window here showing the angels ascending and descending upon the crucified yet risen Christ and also the threshold of our church, that very John chapter 1 and the last verses that I just read to you being proclaimed. Whether saints have these vibrant colors or they're more muted, whether you and I are vibrant in our spiritual lives or more perhaps quiet or muted, it shows us that there are different types of saints. Some are more vibrant and colorful and drawing. Someone like St. John Paul II or our feast day that we're celebrating today, St. Bartholomew, who went to Persia and he went to India and then died in uh, Western Asia. Others live a more kind of quiet life, yet both are strong and beautiful. Both draw the eye of others and they draw people to aspire to the heights of holiness, a life in Christ. Father Dubé, who is from this archdiocese, says this, he's passed away now, on saints, from a book called Deep Conversion, Deep Prayer. On page 97, he says, to bring people closer to God, competency and clarity are important but they are not enough. You and I having a knowledge of the faith is good, it's important, but there, it is not enough. Of themselves, they do not touch hearts deeply. Personal sanctity and goodness do. It is the saints who light fires. It is the saints who light fires. Those are the people that allow themselves to be put in that first fire of baptism and then in continuous encountering Jesus Christ in their life. And those who are heroic enough to be transfigured and to radiate more brightly by allowing the Holy Spirit to do his work within us. We hear in our readings today various different aspects of the church or who we are called to be as people of God to observe the teachings of the Lord, that we may live and enter in and take possession, which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you, to take possession of our holiness, to take possession as living saints, to observe carefully these precepts and to give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence, that you are a great nation, a wise and intelligent people. And then in our second reading that we must be uh, those that are called to deep holiness. And that there's certain readings that we have from, in Revelation, that this bride, the wife of the Lamb, the church, should gleam with radiance, should be clear, no duplicity, that we should be rooted on a firm foundation of the Lord and the apostles and the prophets who came before, that we as the New Jerusalem should radiate such beauty, such holiness. These are the qualities of the Bride of Christ. These are the qualities that you and I, as members of the church, the Bride of Christ, should emulate in our life so that others may be drawn to that beauty. Others may aspire to the heights of holiness. C.S. Lewis says in Mere Christianity, 
The question is not what we intended ourselves to be, but what God intended us to be when he made us. At some level, we may be content to remain what we would call ordinary people, but God is determined to carry out quite a different plan in you and me. Let the fire, whether first or second, transform us. Let the fire of encountering Christ and his Holy Spirit make the colors of our life, our rootedness in Christ, the beauty of holiness, the giftedness that you and I have received in the Holy Spirit, radiate toward others. You'll hear me say over the years this same phrase, you and I are beloved sons and daughters of the Father. You and I are members of the body of Christ, but we should be people who are possessed, possessed by the Holy Spirit. We have been set up by God to radiate. Whether muted or radiant, let us be the saints that he has called us to be. For a Christian is called to the heroic task of witnessing to the world the life of a soul cured by God. A Christian is called to, to the heroic task of witnessing to the world the life of a soul cured by God. As those called by the Father to radiate his radiance, let us make a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our thoughts and prayers, let us turn to the Lord who knows our needs. For Pope Francis, for Archbishop Bernard Hebda, for our pastor Father John Clockman, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and for all who guide the church throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For all who are entrusted with the responsibility of leadership in the world, in our country, in our states, in our cities and communities, and for parts of the world where there is violence and uncertainty, especially in Afghanistan, we pray to the Lord. For those who struggle to believe, for those whose faith has been shaken, and for those who have lost their faith, for those who are searching for meaning in their lives, for those who are living without hope, for all these, we pray to the Lord. For all those suffering physically or emotionally, for those afflicted with the coronavirus, for the elderly, and for the safety of all who are currently in long-term care facilities, for all medical personnel, we pray to the Lord. For those in roles of leadership in our parish, for our parish staff, and for all the members of our school staff, for all of our parish family, we pray to the Lord. For this St. Bartholomew Parish on our feast day as we celebrate our 104th anniversary, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
and for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially the American troops and civilians killed in the bombing in Kabul this past Thursday. We pray to the Lord. God of wisdom, you have built your church on a firm foundation. Help us that we may become living stones, radiating your glory, giving witness to Christ, the Son of the living God, and filled with the Holy Spirit. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all As we celebrate anew the feast day of St. Bartholomew, O Lord, we pray that we may obtain your help through the intercession of the Apostle 
and whose honor we bring you this sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come, until. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. As we celebrate the feast day of the blessed apostle Bartholomew, we have received the pledge of eternal salvation, O Lord, and we pray that it may be of help for us, both now and for the life to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. Commemoration weekend is coming up on the weekend of September 11th and 12th. We will honor those whose lives were lost in the terrorist attack of September 11th and to COVID. Check the bulletin and website for more details. This, of course, is the 20th anniversary of that tragic event. Bring a friend to Mass with you to celebrate James J. Hill Days in Wyzetta after Mass all weekend. Also for Faith Formation Sacramental Prep announcement, stop by the Connections table located outside the Fellowship Hall to get your questions answered about registration for sacramental preparation and faith formation programs for children and adults being offered in the coming year. Additionally, adults and youth 16 years or older can discover the ways, the many ways that you can share your gifts and service to others as we grow in faith together and become more deeply informed disciples. The power of one is accentuated by the power of each one of us. Also just a blessed feast day to all of you. Tradition in the church, whether it's your uh, saints uh, feast day, or for those of you who have a first name that isn't a saint yet, uh, your confirmation saint. Praise, praise be to God, my name is John. So about one third of the church's calendar is St. John's. So I get to celebrate one third of the year. The rest of you suckers have to wait. <laughs> but today you can celebrate uh, St. Bartholomew. Treat yourself and somebody else to some good festivities. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. Contributors to you speak.